Allow me to introduce myself. I am Tanasha Mujera. I'm an author, I'm a marketplace professional, and I'm a woman of God. I am a representation of tested faith. I represent my healed wounds that left ugly scars. This is the Faith in Action podcast that has been created to help you find the journey to your true self through conversations and lessons shared. Good day, everybody, and welcome to the Faith in Action podcast with me, your host, Tinashe Mujera. I am a woman of faith, and I am on a journey to empower women through faith. I'm really excited today because I'm honored to have a beautiful guest who I esteem very much, and I'm privileged to call sister. Her name is Mona Lisa, and uh, she's in the house today. Before I introduce her, let me welcome her. Hi, Mona. Hi, Tina. How are you? I'm good, sis. Welcome to the Faith in Action post podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here today. Awesome. I'm excited. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you always know how to give me that boost <laughs> and motivation. Yeah. No, really honored to have you on the show today, sis. And, mm. um, you know, um, I mean, we've had so many conversations um, and I don't want to uh, introduce you myself. I want you to tell the people <laughs> who you are, what you do, uh-huh. what you represent before we even get into what we want to talk about today. Okay, cool. So I'm a, I'm a television producer, been in the industry for the past, I would say almost, yeah, two decades now. Wow. Started off um, doing short films and feature films, mm. um, originally from Zimbabwe. Oh, yeah. Proudly Zimbabwe. <laughs> and relocated to SA. In getting to South Africa, I started working on reality television. Nice. And I would say uh, God made it possible for me mm. to work on big shows mm. such as SS Got Talent, which mm. I produced uh, for a couple of seasons. Nice. Shows like um, The Voice South Africa, hey. The Voice Nigeria, which I was line producing on. Listen. And then started getting into um, unscripted reality. So doing mm. shows like The Real Housewives of Durban. Wow. Season one, I produced that specific one. Yes, go. Um, it was on Showmax, did very well, trended. Mm. Um, I, it is showing at the moment on Bravo TV wow. in the US. Wow. Which is exciting, wow. as well as it's streaming on Peacock, which is wow. also on U, in, in the US. Nice. I have got a show on Netflix mm. called The Cook Along. So do watch, it's, it's amazing. Um, and I've got about two reality shows. Wow. That are on Netflix that are coming out later in the year. Wow. wow. So that's quite exciting. I'm a wow. CEO of a creative agency. Mm. Uh, we do music, uh, manage musicians as well as celebrities, yeah. um, as well as actors as well. Wow. We also do film and television. Mm. And we are now also in doing internal communications, especially for corporates. Wow. So those, yeah, those are the two two big things that I do. <laughs> I'm into property nice. as well. I sell houses in North Cyprus, mm. Spain, as well as in Dubai. Listen. And I'm also a life coach teaching people yes. how to, you know, create uh, vision boards. Love it. I'm big on that. Yeah. It's an essential tool that I think everyone should, mm. should have. Totally. And lastly, I'm a child of God. Mm. Yeah. Listen. That's me. Listen, black woman doing it all. I love it. I love to see it. I love it when African women stand up and take up space. And that is exactly what you're doing, Mona. I'm really inspired by your life, your journey. I mean, what you do, who you are, what you represent. That's amazing. I mean, before we even get into the show, for for those that are not into arts, into music, you know where to go to. We'll share her details right after the show so that you guys can get in touch with her directly. So, Today, we are going to be talking about all women in media. Um, And that is why we have Mona on the show. You've heard it for yourself. She is a producer. She's done work on great, uh, uh, um, you know, TV shows um, Mm. or with great TV shows. I mean, Netflix is not a small thing to talk about. The Real Wives of uh, Housewives of Durban, you said. I mean... 
that's a lot. Like I can't even finish the list. It's a whole <laughs> lot. She's done a lot. So I just want her to really come through and I wanted her to come through and share with us her life journey and, and how she manages all of that. Because, I mean, it's always easy to say, you know, people have done this and have done that, but there's someone out there who really wants to also walk the same journey, but they're not sure how to go about it or someone who's rather in, in, in the journey already, but maybe about to give up or not sure how to navigate through certain things. So it's amazing that we have you today, Mona, because I think you're going to really share some great testimonies um, and motivation in terms of how you've really done it to really share and, and motivate someone out there. So I am going to start with a very simple question, which is tell us about your journey and media. I mean, media is for men. What are you doing <laughs> in that space? How are you producing as a black woman? Come on. Yeah. So I think with me, I was called into the industry. Let mm. me put it as that. Um, a lot of people are not necessarily apostles, ministers, mm. or prophets. Mm. They, you mm. are called to a specific industry. Mm. And that's how it started off with me at a very young age. Wow. I love the arts. Wow. I was one of those kids you'd find in front of um, crowds. Maybe it's a, mm. a school play, mm. for instance. It's prize giving. I'd be that girl be getting prizes for drama. Wow. Because I loved arts. And it was greatly influenced by my parents. Mm. Uh, mind you, they're both in the army, one a captain, and my mom is a retired major. Oh, wow. So that was quiet, yeah, <laughs> awkward when you yeah. think of it, but they love the arts. Mm. Um, I would go to concerts with my dad as early as five years. Um, he, I would say he greatly influenced my journey. Mm. So I knew that I wanted to be in the arts mm. uh, space from mm. as early as primary school, going on to high school. I remember even for my A-levels, mm. uh, my combination was arts. Mm. And after getting my results, my mom was just like, you cannot be doing arts. Mm. Like people wow. who do, do arts, you know, they end up having, you know, troubles, <laughs> financial troubles. <laughs> and it's not a way of you to, to earn a living. Yeah. But I was determined to to walk this journey. And I remember after school, high school, she gave, she said to me, she gave me an ultimatum. Wow. Let me put it like that, that you will take a gap here, mm. prove to me mm. that you can do something with just the talent that you have. And I took it up. Wow. I mean, by 19, I'd moved out of the house, oh, wow. landed my first internship job. Let me put it like that wow. at an, at the national arts council of Zimbabwe, sure. working there as a festival coordinator. Wow. Then moved on to Chipao, where I learned again theater and a bit of um, media. Nice. Uh, then I did apply for a place at school, which was at the University of Pretoria. Mm. Got to do um, my BA drama. Mm. And from there, got my first gig from Tsitsilanga Rimboa. Wow. Who had seen a theater piece that I directed. And she was like, the way you did this, um, wow. would you want to work on TV because you thought about how people are entering on stage and leaving the stage, which cameras to look at. Mm. And that's how my journey started. Yeah. And what God did was all the time he would bring in divine helpers. Wow. It will be all those ladies who'd come through because when I was doing Titi Dangarimbo's show, a uh, uh, particular feature film, I was there, I was given a position as an assistant to the executive mm. producer. Wow. So from day one, sure. I was pulled into producing. Mm. So I was working closely to an executive producer. Mm. And those that understand the film mm. or television, it's never easy. You need to start off as a production runner mm. where you're making coffee for, for wow. the executive producers. You're making copies. You're doing anything and everything. Mm. But I was privileged enough to start from there. Wow. Uh, while it's on that set, I then met Rumbika Tedza. Mm. Uh, she was then the director for the Zimbabwe Film Festival Trust. Mm. And... She was just like, okay, we've got the festival. We have a unit called the Short Film Project. Mm. Come and learn some more about film. And maybe you can start off as being one of our production coordinators. Oh. And that's how I started working with Rumbi Katedza and Nakai Metema. Oh. From there, I started working with um, Dorothy Mick. Mm. Uh, moved on to a company called Afrovision Entertainment and started working on feature films and documentaries mm. with her. So when I say it's a calling, sure. God was just putting till this very day mm. people are put into my life are brought into my life mm. and they just make it easy but obviously having those that you know those divine connections right. 
you still need to be a person who is focused. Mm. You still need to be hardworking. Mm. You still need to, you know, persevere. Mm. Just like I said earlier that it is a calling. Mm. And when it's a calling, not all seasons are going to be great. Oh, wow. You're still going to have your winter. Mm. You're still going to have your autumn, mm. your spring, and your summer. Wow. And some days it's going to be so difficult and you're just like, I can't do this. That's right. But what needs to keep, you know, you going is mm. just that dream mm. to say, I want to see this happening. Mm. And if you keep at it, mm. surely you will succeed. Mm. Wow. Mona, you say the handful. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Amazing, amazing. I absolutely love what you say about, you know, you were called into the industry. That is so profound. I mean, I believe there are people out there that talk about, you know, or think that they are called into something, but not sure. The marketplace is a calling. That's basically what you've just said here. How does one identify they are calling or know that they've been called into this place? What happened to you? You know, I know you said growing up, you just loved it. But what happened? How were you sure? What was the, that, that melting point where you knew? This is it and nothing else. Because the way you say it's a calling, you are so sure of it, you know. And I, and I often find people are not so sure of mm. the calling that they carry. So tell us about that. So for me, I think it took a couple of years of trial and error. Mm. Let me put it like that. Mm. And you get to a point where you reach rock bottom. Mm. You start questioning even the career choice. You're like, am I really good at this? Yeah. Or, you know, is this for me? Mm. And I think at that point in time, it was actually a conversation I'd had with God. Mm. And, and I'd say to him, like, God, why is it that for me, I have to work 10 times harder than the next person? Sure. Why is it nothing comes to me on a silver platter? Mm. I've tried, I've tried business. I mm. promise I'd opened, there's a time when I opened a boutique. Mm. I even had a children's oh, shop. Wow. Um, I tried different hassles. Wow. But every time it brought back, it brought me back to TV. Wow. Or film. Wow. It was every time I'd start to do something, it doesn't work out, it comes back to sure. here. And I guess also, if you're passionate about something, mm. that's another way of knowing what you're called for. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the passion. Something mm. that you know that you can, number one, do it even when you're sleeping. Mm. You know, when someone wakes you up and you're like, okay, Tinashe, how do I do this? Mm. You can easily do it. Mm. Um, you love what you do. Mm. You don't mind working mm. long hours. Mm. Yeah, everyone sees the glam regarding TV, but the hours that go into that, it. it's hectic. It's a six-day sure. week that you work. Yeah. It's anything between 14 to 16 hours. Mm. A same person will be like, why am I doing this? I'm used to a nine to five. Mm. But it's a passion. It's what keeps wow. you going. It, it's what drives you. Wow. And for me, I mean, it's the different personalities that you get to meet and being able just to impact in their lives. Um, that also gives me, that's so fulfilling for me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Mona, that is so profound. And thank you for sharing that. And I believe that, you know, the listeners and people that are watching, you've heard it for yourself, how to identify your core, especially when it's not to do with the fivefold ministry, you know, which people often regard as the only core, but actually the marketplace is a core um, itself. So thank you for, for sharing that, Mona. That is um, faith in action, really. Uh, 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 yeah, in reality and you living it. I'm going to ask you a few questions that I have here, you know, just to understand, you know, your journey in media. So tell us about your faith and how it um, has influenced your perspective on representation and diversity in the media. And how do you incorporate those um, sort of values, you know, into your work as a producer? So for me, um, with everyone that I work with, be it cast or crew, there's, uh, there are certain statements that I always say to them. Mm. You know, we work in a high pressurized environment mm. And you're bound to snap at any given time. But I thank God for the patience that I have. Yeah. That's one thing that yeah. I'm always told about. Yeah. You're very patient. Yeah. You're very calm. Sure. And that does not come naturally. It's something that you, you're God-given. Mm. And you, you're supposed to be that person. Mm. So I always say that whenever there's a situation, mm. it's about finding the way forward and not mm. blaming each other. Mm. But also having conversations. Because when you have a conversation then you're able to find a way. Wow. Um, I also, I'm all, also about love. Mm. You know, I might not be able to stand at a pulpit and wow. spread the word, but for me, 
love is universal. Love is the biggest thing, irregardless of, you know, whatever someone believes in. Mm. Just being there for mm. everyone outside mm. of the work that you need to do. Sure. Just for them to know that, you know, if I'm going through whatever I'm going through, Mona Lisa is there. Mm. She will listen. She will hear me out and mm. she will be understanding. Mm. So that's how I get to minister. Wow. And it's it's so, you know, when you see people's lives being transformed, when you know that people can call you at any given time mm. and just be there for them, mm. it's it's so fulfilling. Wow. That is actually living the scripture, Mona. You speak about patience. You speak about love. Those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we're told to live like that. In as much as you, you know, it's easy for someone to say I have love, but not in action. But you show it in action. I mean, I've received it from you. And I've seen the patience and the calmness you're talking about. So it is a true and real thing. So there we go. Patience, calmness, love. Lead with those and everything else will come into, um, you know, into its rightful place or into alignment rather. And you speak about conversations. I love that. Instead of us quarreling, why don't we converse and just talk about it? Yeah. <sighs> God help me. <laughs> <laughs> so Mona, I want to ask about some of the challenges and obstacles you faced as a black female in the media industry and how you've managed to overcome them. Um, as you know, and I mean, it's, 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 it's public knowledge to everyone that our industry has a few females. Yeah. So you'll arrive on a set and maybe... 10 or 90 percent are male and only 10 percent are female yeah so for me the challenge is just I, I I don't take it as a challenge but I look at it and try and think of how we can bring in more females into mm. our space so I'm big on mentorship wow. um whenever I'm working on any project we try and bring in interns and ensure that we also have females mm. represented there yeah. they need to realize that there is space for them mm. as well in the industry yeah. um there's also the issue of you know our jobs and projects are seasonal mm. so being able to stay i'll say sane <laughs> all the time sure. is not easy yeah. because you will have work for 6 months and the next 3 months you don't have anything That's to do right. so it's also you know having that inner peace uh, mental health is a big thing mm. right now, especially even for, I'd say even for, it's for everyone. Yeah. But you can imagine how many creatives were affected during COVID, oh. where in SA alone, I think we're one of the last industries to open up again. And it took years before people could get work again. Mm. So those are the kind of challenges that you come across where it's not a stable job. I won't say stable, but not in terms of security, yeah. it's you you don't know what will your life would look like in the next coming months. Yeah. And I guess that's why I set up the company in terms mm -hmm. of Monzi Ice Creations yes. to ensure that when I'm not working on a long form project, mm -hmm. I am still able to create content. Mm -hmm. So it's finding, you know, the balance to say, okay, this each year I take two big projects or one big project that I work on, mm -hmm. but the rest of the year I'm creating my own content. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what makes life easier these days is, you know, of cell phones, you can use cell phones to create content. Mm. Um, you can, th there are ways and easier ways of making, of mm. creating content. Mm. So it's always thinking outside the box. Mm. So yes, we're presented with challenges, mm. but it's always finding a solution around wow. it. Wow, Mona. Sure. Yo, so, so full of wisdom. And, and I think I want to reiterate on, on the, point of vision boarding and how you are a mentor and I mean you've done vision boarding even with a group of ladies that I also put together recently a wonderful absolutely amazing job you did and we're seeing some of those results coming to pass already do you want to just dial into what you do in terms of vision boarding and what vision boarding really is and how it helps people accelerate in terms of you know what they're called for but also what their dreams are and what they want out of life Great. So what happens is every year, you know, you and I put together resolutions. And what happens throughout the year, we don't look back mm. to see, you know, after three months or after six months, how is, you know, my list going, through, yeah. going on yeah. and making a che checklist. Yeah. So I prefer using um, vision boards because, yes, I'm a visual person, mm. but you're able to visualize and see this on a daily basis. That's it's right. kind of like a, a reminder and reaffirming what it is that you want to do. So it's simply, I'd say vision boards, it's just taking your goals that you've listed down, 
translating them into pictures. Wow. So if it's a house that you want to have this year, mm. look for an image that represents that house and start putting it on a on a vision board. I love saying that, you know, if you can if you can see it, you can hold it. That's it. So that's what a vision board mm. is. So mm. the moment you see it, mm. you're like, okay, this I can mm. definitely hold. The drive comes. So it doesn't replace the planning aspect mm. because a lot of people think that, okay, I've put everything <laughs> on a board. It's just going to help. It's going to happen. Yeah. But remember, we've got our three Ps mm. where we're saying you, you're, you are... You are planning. Mm -hmm. That's what you've done in terms of the vision board. Mm -hmm. You now need to prepare. Yeah. How are you going to execute that? Yeah. And then finally produce which wow. are the results at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Because people just think it all manifest and that's it. A mm -hmm. typical example, uh, I'm guilty of it. Every year I will have <laughs> a fitness goal. <laughs> and Talk I will say that. for the next, uh, I would say January, February and March and April, I am very faithful. I will go to the gym. I will jog and I'll eat healthily. But come May, June, winter starts setting mm. in. You won't find me there. Yeah. I love being a warm body. <laughs> and the cycle continues. Yeah. So that's the thing. If you've put down something, you need to be, you need to stay consistent, it. see it through. Mm. And uh, vision boards do not replace, you know, the hard work at mm. the end of the day. It's an essential tool. Mm. Think of it as a tool mm. that will help you to succeed. Wow. It's like when you go to a bank, mm. you have an awesome project. Mm. But at the end of the day, the bank needs to see a business plan. That's it. What is the project about? Wow. How are we going to get our, our wow. money back? What is the plan? Wow. So that's what it is at the end of wow. the day. And a lot of successful people mm. use this tool. True. And I'll just mention a few. Mm. Oprah Winfrey. Mm. Your Steve Jobs, he used mm. it as well. You know, um, the one I always laugh at and I'm like, really? Katy Perry? Yes, <laughs> she uses a vision board. I laugh because she's a creative like me. And I'm like, wow, mm. that's that's amazing. But you need to visualize at the end of the day. And what, what God has done has given us the power of imagination. Yeah, that's right. So think of it like that. Mm. You're visualizing mm. to say, this is what I want mm. at the end of the day. Mm. I use the vision board. I put it in my prayer closet mm. because at times I have a hectic schedule. Mm. I'll go in that prayer closet and I'm like, okay, good morning, God. It is me. I Aww. am praying. You know my heart's desires That's and right. you know my plan for the year. Yes. These are the things that I need. Yeah. And slowly by, but surely, by the time I get to the a year end, most of the things on the vision board would have happened. Wow. And at times I'm so surprised wow. that I've not wow. even prayed about it, but wow. it has happened. Wow. Um, so that's that's the power of vision boards. Yeah. Yeah. I could go on and on wow. because you're yes, passionate about it. It's very close to my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell the people at least about the event that's coming um, on vision boarding? All right. So yes. on the 20th of January, mm. we have a vision board session. I've termed it um, vision board workshop beyond 2024. Nice. So it's not only focusing on this year, wow. but you might have goals which are, you know, a two year goal or mm. three year goal. How are we going to get there? That's right. And what I've also done this time around, which is different, uh, it's to bring in a career coach. Nice. Because as women, we struggle with certain topics, things like negotiating your salary, uh, boardroom politics, yep. um, self-awareness and how to get the promotion. Mm. So, yeah, this time around, I've collaborated with a career coach. Her name is Mercy Secure. Mm. So I'm quite excited about that to say in terms of our offering, this is what we have. Nice. And obviously, this is for Gauteng. Then in February, I'm doing Durban on the 24th, um, 24th of February. Amazing, Mona. Yes. Amazing. Thank you know you. what? This is so exciting to hear. You spoke about if you can see it, you can have it. And scripture tells us, she says, it says, write the vision down. That's not by coincidence. Surely there's a reason why God had to put in that. And now it takes me to the next question, Mona. Time, time time <laughs> and i want to get all of this out of you you know um can you share any advice words of encouragement you know for other black females aspiring to pursue a career in media while also staying true to their faith and their identity wow where to start i think it's first and foremost not giving up on on your dream 
So whatever you do desire to become, be it a, you know, a DOP, a media pract- practitioner, mm. be it a director or producer. Firstly, not just giving up on that. Yeah. Um, secondly, it's also making sure that, you know, you get the right people yeah. in terms of your circle and your mm. chime, making sure that you've got a mentor. Because half the time, the things that we're trying to do, the challenges that we're having is because we don't have mentors. That's right. And I know there are less mentors in our in our space, mm. but find that one person that you can identify mm. with. I remember back then when I did my first vision board, I think I had a, a picture of Oprah. Mm. I love the work that she does. Yeah. But slowly I was like, okay, Oprah is a bit far, but who can I find locally mm. or even like in Africa? Yeah. And now I follow Mo Abudi. And I love the work that she's done with with Ebony Life. Wow. And when I look at it, we're like, okay, but in South Africa, we've got a Connie Ferguson. Mm. And Connie has done well. Yes. So let's approach the people who are within our reach That's and right. get that mentorship. That's right. And uh, upscaling mm. ourselves, mm. know what's out there in terms of technology, know what's out there in terms of productions. Um, so it's it's putting in the work and just not giving up. Mm. And when you get that job, whatever opportunity comes your way, because it's not every time that you do get it, go there and do it very well. Mm. Make an impression. You're as good as your last job. Mm. That is so true. And I mean, you are such a hard worker, Mona. You work so hard. But I think your superpower is how you remain calm again, that patience we spoke about and the love. And I think something that we really need to continue talking about, patience, calmness which is equals to peace and just the love you exude in doing what you do in incorporating even the hard work that you're talking about thank you for that and i think anybody there looking for that advice here you go and there you go she also said she's a mentor she said look for the people around you i'm sending people mona (laughs) now how can people get a hold of you get in touch with you i know time is quite jealous because i would have wanted us to converse more but i mean we don't have enough time. How can people get in touch with you? They can get hold of Tinashe. She's managing me now. I'm kidding. So <laughs> <laughs> I might as well. <laughs> you might as well at this rate. Um, uh, no, what? That's one thing that God uh, spoke to me about end of last year in mm. terms of getting a manager mm. for myself in wow. terms of the work that I do. So. And I'll have a manager um, and I'll be putting her details on on my platforms. But I'm on Instagram Mm. as well as X, Mm. as well as Facebook. And it's at Mona Lisa Chisango. Mm. Um, In terms of the company, we're all on all platforms at Monzi Eyes Creations. Very good. Yeah, that's how you can get hold of me. Awesome. Thank you, Mona. Mona Lisa Chisango on all platforms. I'll also share the details, you know, um, on this podcast show so that you guys can be able to get in touch with her if this show has really touched you, if you want to get more out of what she does, but also if you are passionate about the media industry as a female particularly, you are welcome to get a hold of Mona and she can advise in the best way that she can. Um, Everybody is, um, I think we're done, yeah? We are okay, done for to now. Cut, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for having me. I hope thank next you, time Mama. I can come through talk about other things. That's right. Outside of media. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which you're passionate about. I mean, we want to hear it all. Of course, you're yes. more than welcome to come through uh, to this podcast anytime because there's so much wisdom you carry, Mona, and we want to hear about it also. Really, sis, I appreciate your presence today and thank you for honoring um, the Faith in Action podcast. To everybody that is watching, everybody that is listening, I am your host, Tinashe Mujera, the Faith in Action podcast. And really, thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Till we meet next time, it's bye for now. <laughs>